All right, five o'clock on a March Madness Monday. You know what the drill uh, is? It's hit the books time, ladies and gentlemen. Alongside the man, the myth, legend himself, Mr. Joey Kanish. We have Jason filling in for producer extraordinaire Zach Phillips. And obviously, we'll get to your questions and concerns. I am merely Brad Powers. Before we talk some college hoops, yes, we will talk some college hoops on today's show. We'll touch on a little bit of college football subjects that I want to get uh, Kanish's take on. Before we get to any of that, and of course, your questions, let me remind everybody that Hit the Books is brought to you by BetStamp. The easiest way to improve as a sports better is to use multiple sports books and always getting the best odds. We recommend using an odds comparison tool like BetStamp. BetStamp compares odds across every sports book for games, futures, and player props. You can save time and money by checking BetStamp before you bet. Download the app today. If you're looking to sign up for a new sports book account, please check out the offers available at betstamp.app slash hit the books, or you can hit the link in the description. If you sign up through this page, it does help support the show. Long time no talk, Kanish. What's happening? What's new uh, in your neck of the woods? I, uh, you know what? Uh, f- feeling good. Couple, a uh, couple of things. Wanted to give a shout out uh, on a somber note uh, to. I know he, he's been part of uh, some. We, we've talked about him on circles off and that. Uh, but Troy Hermo from Bleacher Report uh, passed away last night. A guy uh, that a lot of people on on Twitter knew had followed his story recently. Um, just to condolences to his family and man, I, I. I will always be inspired by by the way Troy went about things, e- even in the the face of adversity, the face of uh, you know the, the dealing with cancer, you know, for five years. So, um, man, I love the guy, feel for his family, um, but incredible inspiration. The other on a on a more up, uplifting note is I seem to have found my love of college buckets again. And it's thanks to a good friend of yours, <laughs> the Blue Horseshoe, of the most locked in I've been to a college basketball game in about four years. Was that DePaul? Uh, the DePaul? Uh, was it DePaul UConn game or, or DePaul? I don't remember what the where Villanova. Uh, DePaul, Villanova, Villanova, DePaul, Villanova, where. He's laying minus four thousand. Uh, I think at one point in the second half there was a live. It was live pick. Uh, literally, you could get like minus one fifteen. Um, they were an underdog with ten seconds. Yes, right? yes. And then they hit a three, and I was, oh my god! Some people I, for for a game that I didn't have a one single dollar on. Um, felt good to uh, to be invested in a college basketball game. So uh, yeah, a uh, couple of good things there. But hey, good to be back, uh, and a uh, little March Madness this week with you. Yeah, let me get uh, quickly, uh, because I know a lot of people want to talk March Madness, maybe in a few draft questions. A couple things uh, as far as college football, since I last talked to you, uh, you you're talking about brackets. We got bracket creep already with college football. 12 teams, forget that. How would you like the 12 team? We're going going to 14. Uh, Do I hear 16? Uh, Your quick thoughts uh, on a uh, 14-team college football playoff. I, I knew I'm glad we're doing this in, in the off season because uh, you know for the premium show we could spend uh, you know you know thirty minutes. Bib, it's just there's here's a problem. There's never contract. You go to any sport, any major sport, any regular, anytime there's expansion, and the people get used to the that level of money and that those checks come rolling in. There's never contraction. You're never going to four. You're never going back to six. You're never going back to eight. Nothing will like it's going to be fourteen. And then they'll be get if somebody gets greedy. I get sixteen. Yeah, and then they'll be like, what? What about thirty two? You know. I, listen, am I still gonna watch? Am, am I? We're still two suckers here. Gonna be doing college football shows all week, betting on every game, watching it. So I, I can't be too upset at it because I'm gonna still be locked in. But I liked four. I could have seen going to eight. Twelve annoyed me. Fourteen with three buys in each of the big conferences of like. I don't know. Yeah, you you said it last last show that, and it won't get enough clip of you had what all of these sports outside of the NFL desire, and that's a meaningful regular season where every game has a massive premium, and you're going to slowly lose that and become college basketball where nobody watches the regular season. Nobody no. cares about. I don't. We'll get to that nobody level, though, but college basketball. Do, do, do people even know who's got like it before February? Nobody even I, can you name like three players before February? I mean, I it's just yeah, it is what it is. I'm fr- it's frustrating. I don't know why you'd want to become college basketball. Look, I love the tournament for college basketball, it's fun, but it's a one month of thing. Uh, yeah, everyone loves it for one month, they don't love it the other 11 months. No, I don't know why college football would want to do that, but whatever. We know why money, 
Uh, <laughs> hey, that money isn't always guaranteed. And when the ratings aren't going to be there uh, on a weekly basis, you, you, I mean, it'd be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, a couple more things, college football. Uh, Missouri had a spring game, believe it or not. Uh, I know you were watching it, uh, breaking it down. Uh, One of my guys is a Missouri guy, so I heard. Uh, let me know. Did you see any of it? Or what, what are your I thoughts? did watch it. I did watch it. Uh, I got some notes, uh, a few to say the least. I'll break it down position real quick. A uh, quarterback worried about the backup spot. When you got to go out and get Drew Pine, uh, that, that's a worry. The, the, the backup that they originally <laughs> thought they were going to have this year. Famous uh, member of this show, Drew Pine. Yeah, played baseball, and he's going to get – he got hurt, and he's going to be out for the season. Uh, that concerns me. you got to keep Brady Cook healthy, and I'm not a – Brady Cook's a good quarterback. I don't think he's a great one. Running back, you lose the trader. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a massive loss. You're talking about one of the best seasons as far as rushing in the history of the SEC. Uh, they bring in a couple of group of five transfers, Marcus Carroll from Georgia State, uh, Nate Noel uh, from App State, two solid group of five transfers. I think they'll be okay there. Wide receivers elite. Uh, I think it's a top five wide receiver unit in the country. Offensive line's fine. Defensive line is better than expected. I think it's a, just to sum it up quickly. It's a good team. I don't think it's a great team. Are they going to match last year's eleven wins? Probably not. Uh, win total right now is nine and a half with the under juiced. I, that sounds right to me as far as Missouri is concerned. Yeah, I think it, it's you know a team that they've they've really tried to up the recruiting. Like they, they made that in-state law. They've gone after a couple of five-star guys uh, and landed a couple and a team that might be a little bit of a preseason darling that, you know, we've seen, I remember when we first looked at uh, national title futures, there was some hundred to one out there on Missouri. Now some places are like 30, 35 to one. It w it was a, it was a team that I think maybe you would have gotten a nice price on to make the playoff. And now you're not going to. And so I don't want to be negative on the, you know, the direction of the program or any of that, but it's one of those that I, I they're trying to, they seem to be really wanting to try to get in that big boy, you know, do, do spending money, get in that next tier of the SEC. It's hard though. It's really like, it's just hard to, especially, you know, going against some of the established players in there. Um, I, 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 they just seem a tier below, you know, where, where it's like, maybe they sneak in if they win the right games. I just, would you ever have them on, you know, a Georgia and Ohio state level? It's like, they're just a, a tier below for me. Um, and nothing that I've really wanted to invest in so far early season stuff. Yeah. I think they're a playoff team. They're not a national title contending team. If that makes sense. Uh, they, with the 12 team playoff, I mean, there is a distinction, you know, can, the, can Missouri make the playoffs? Absolutely. Uh, can they win three games in the playoffs? Probably not. So uh, th that's kind of where I'm at with them. Uh, it was a thud. I hate game spring games that are thud, meaning they don't tackle the ground. Uh, uh -huh. So I don't get the best of looks, to say the least, and something like that. Uh, one other thing I want to get to, and this is in your neck of the woods. What do you feel about that Michigan coaching staff? A little extracurricular activities there in Ann Arbor. You know, I, I tell you that that was not, I think they're going to have to fire honestly. And I know yep. some program, but I think they're going to have to fire them based on some of the, honestly, some of the history with some of the hires. And if you look at a, you know, and it's not, I, I think if it wasn't mission, if he wasn't walking into this scenario, maybe you suspend the guy, he comes back. Uh, well, obviously we're talking about the D line coach arrested for D DUI, OWI, whatever you want to call it there. Um, just got hired and you're doing that? Yeah, that's, just, yeah, that's out, a bad out of there. And a guy who, by all accounts, good recruiter, a, a guy a lot of the guys on stat were excited to play for. I don't see how he survives it, to be honest with you, especially with, you know, the Connor Stanley and some of the stuff that, that has gone on with staffers in the past few years. Um, I would be kind of surprised if he did that. So I liked a lot of the staff they hired, um, including him, but – if I was a betting man um, and you could bet on this, I, I would say he's probably going to get fired. And now you're, you're going to another tier for a defensive line coach. One more thing on the Michigan coaching front, Tony Alford hat news happened since I last spoke to you. I thought that nah, 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 well, now we're talking to a little more, more positive coaching news there. I saw you <laughs> respond to that on uh, Twitter there. Uh, that shocked a lot of, a lot of people. It did. Uh, this is not a homer take. Keep in mind, I'm wearing a Buckeye hat, but I don't like the Buckeyes. I wear a Michigan hat. I don't like Michigan. I just like hats. Uh, I, I do like the blue bloods of the sport. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to knock Michigan. I thought I think Alford's lost his fastball. I think it was stunning 
as far as, hey, I mean, a lot of a lot of winning in today's day and age is winning the narrative. Mm-hmm. And certainly Michigan wins the narrative, pulling Ohio State's running back coach who's been there forever. And, uh, you know, his his resume is really good and his past successes are, are really good. So winning that narrative as far as the headlines, great for Michigan. As far as his coaching acumen, T. Lee's for me says he was a better running back coach five years ago. He's more of a dog on the recruiting trail five years ago than when he's been the last couple of years. Yeah, and you know what? I, I, I think he's a better recruiter than he is coach, um, whereas Mike Hart, who got replaced, was a better coach, much, much better coach than he was recruiter. So you're kind of replacing one for another. I agree with you that I think a lot of this was um, – just a Sharon Moore splash and a shot to the bow. And if you look at how it went down, I mean, I'll give you the process where some of those defensive hires to get through the back before they were formally announced were weeks, were weeks, like multiple weeks. They had to look in and do the background check, do everything. Alford, the news leaks, and like two hours later, he was formally announced, which means he had basically taken the job while he's – at spring practice for Ohio State. Um, you believe in all the conspiracy theories about the I playbook mean, and all that? You want to call it, listen, I, I mean, I don't know if it's conspiracy as much as it is like it's it cutthroat, which is right. Listen, that's part of the rivalry. It, I know one yeah. of the, the big Ohio State posters called it dirty business or nasty business, whatever. I'm not going to, I'm not going to refute that. I mean, it's your, you're throwing more and you're coming into a, you know, a situation and you're trying to uh, make a splash and to take, like you've got Ryan day on the ropes. Whereas yeah. one more loss and he's probably he's KO'd. Yeah. So you got him on the ropes there. You're going for a KO. That's one of the guys on the staff that you could get. Um, You went for it. So yeah, I agree with you a little bit more narrative than substance, but the that, narrative is not stunning, very funny, to say the least. So I, I'll say that it was a stunning, not something I thought I'd wake up and read on Twitter and Agreed. on that particular day. Uh, let's get to the chat here quickly. And guys, we've got a, a little bit of a shortened show. Uh, we're only going to go another 15, 20 minutes. Uh, Charles in the chat. Happy March, boys. And we will talk college hoops now. Uh, have to know which minus 8,000 uh, Joy Buckets uh, laying opening weekend. I think Connecticut's safe. They're not Purdue from last year. I agree. I agree with that. Not that I lay the pr- – I just – this is – Listen, I don't mind laying juice like you know, minus 300, minus five. There's there's value in or I think I just think there's better. I tweeted this before better ways to make money than laying minus four thousands, minus five thousands or like there's more edges to be had than laying that type of price in, a, especially in this day and age in college basketball. And the three point era and the very like that's just not not saying there's no uh, can't be value. Just not how I would go about it from a personal preference. I'm okay if you're personally betting it. Uh, and, and, you know, the price should be, you know, I think the, the – we're, and we're quoting Fezzik here uh, as far as Mr. Blue Horseshoe uh, himself. Hey, if you think it should be minus 8,000 and you can find minus 4,000 on Connecticut, kudos. Bet it. I don't know that you should be announcing it to the Twitter world when you lost one last year. And you were very fortunate not to lose another one here. <laughs> the, the, a week and ago think about and how many. So you lose. Let's call it. You play to win one unit. You lose forty units. You lose two. You lose eighty unit. Yeah. You've got to win so many of the. Like you're putting yourself at this. To, even if there yeah. was value. Also, Houston minus twenty five. Not sure where he. Uh, you know, he, uh, that was an interesting price he got on that one because uh, I. Uh, I don't see. I don't see much close to that on the board. Uh, but uh, yeah. You know, I'm, Funny um, how he, he gives those out, uh, the, the yeah, off-market yeah, numbers. Yeah, I no, mean, I mean, maybe the Red Rock uh, at 3 a.m. had 2,500. Uh, you know, but... Speaking of Fezzik, now, quick announcement. Uh, we are doing a watch-along, and yeah. we're on the street. I am hosting it. We're oh, on babe. the street. Is the, the suits are trying to get Fezzik and me together uh, for the Houston game. Oh. So uh, we'll see. Uh, it's going to be uh, Friday night right around 8 yeah, o'clock. yeah. Tournament uh, live watch party. Uh, follow us on Twitter uh, as far as Brad Power Seven, uh, and also uh, at Hit the Books HQ and at the Hammer HQ for more details on that. Again, Friday uh, live watch long NCAA basketball. I'll be hosting it with a bunch of guests, and Fezzik's going to be one of them. Hopefully, you got time. Jump yeah, on. I think I'm, I'm, uh, Moretto asked me today. I think I'm going to uh, jump in. 
Okay, cool. Looking forward to that. Uh, Charles in the chat again, uh, at current price, do you think there's any value? Uh, we're talking NFL draft here, fading Turner to be the first, uh, defenseman, uh, selected from the same neighborhood, uh, as me I had to sneak that in, uh, same question for Joe Ald as well. Have you bet anything to do with that as far as the NFL draft? I have. So just in terms of those, I do, I think there could potentially be with Turner. Yes. Do I have a great feel for who it's going to be at the moment? No. Um, the Joe all I'm not as big on. I know one of my guys, there was like a 10 to one on the, the, the other guy that was out there for a little bit, took some of that. I think in the end it's going to be old. Um, and so, but I, have I laid the juice on that? No. Uh, so I, that's, that's a fancy way of saying that I haven't really, uh, gotten involved with it. The, the first defensive player has caught my eye. I just, I just don't have a great feel right now, uh, or any information on, who it would be if it's not him. I, I do think it's a little bit juiced and that there could be some value there, um, but just haven't haven't taken a position yet on uh, any of the other guys. I have not been anything really draft related yet. Oh, and you know what? I did. I, I knew uh, if you follow on Twitter, GRP, uh, old uh, Panagakis, <laughs> I did bet over four and a half quarterbacks because I knew he was going to, the market was going to move on that. It's something pretty square, but uh Maybe I'll play back later. Did you play that one? It's moved significantly. I did not. I would agree though with the with, with the play. I mean, it I think you've got like four absolutely lock guaranteed, and then yeah. just need a fifth, you know, to to fly around. And I think there's enough quality where you, you'll get somebody taking a, a mid or later round flyer on one of the other guys. So I agree with I agree with the play. Uh Gabe in the chat, thank you for that uh, compliment there. Uh best show in the business right here. Wish you guys had it more often. Obviously, we'll ramp it up as far as the, the number of shows as we get closer to football season. We wrap up college uh, hoops here, for talk sure. NFL draft. Although I will say, I, I'm going to miss a week or two. I'm actually going to be back in your neck of the woods for a couple weeks. Oh, so, I thought you. Uh, I mean, is there a? So you're just coming? Huh? Are you doing the stadium tour? Is there a new a stadium tour? We're going to hit like three or four spring games. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Uh, call me uh, a nerd, but I'm actually in that little window, that sliver with the uh, the eclipse. Don't I mean I was just watching from my parents' place. Uh oh. you know, the big solar eclipse. I'm sure okay. you, that's nerd. Good place to there, watch but that in, in the fields of Ohio, you get a great view. Yeah, I get a great view. I mean, it's total eclipse, whatever. Uh so I'm gonna go for that. So uh we'll, we'll uh let you guys know as far as uh the shows as we leading to it here. But again, we'll ramp it up. Uh more here as far as questions. Uh RW fan in the chat, and this is uh College basketball, Longwood, money line, big bomber, banger, five unit, Maxwell, lock play, or quarter unit. I don't like Longwood uh, money line. I'll just put it that way. No, I, I mean, genuinely, I'll probably throw like 20 bucks on that parlay that I tweeted out earlier for, for the live watch long just uh, just for fun. Because I, I told myself after the DePaul game, I was like, I got to start betting against these just so I have a ticket when one of them yeah, wins yeah, yeah. To, to, you know, victory parade around. So, uh, but don't do it like, don't do that as like a serious batter if you know you don't got that kind of dispensable income. More uh, questions in the chat. Uh, RW fan, when do most books post win totals for college football? Uh, free books have them up right now. I see William Hill Caesars just posted them uh, for the Power Five. So, and they have a couple of different numbers there. Obviously, FanDuel's had them up for six weeks now. And then uh, bet online, a little bit lower limits there, but uh, three books is. Honestly, three more than what we've had at any other point uh, that since I've been doing it. As far as mid-March, we've never had three books with win totals out. As far as widely available, I'm guessing and hoping uh, that it's May. It's at, They wait until after spring practice, that they wait until after the next transfer portal. And then, uh, you know, I, I'll be happy that, to bet anything in May. But let, let's hope uh, that that'll be the case and they're not getting greedy and opening it up uh, here right after the – I, I'm guessing a few are going to get greedy, uh, right? Final four weekend, and, and they'll want people's money, uh, and they'll do some stuff with college football as college basketball winds up. Uh, Michael in the chat, uh, yeah, the RW also asked the game of the year line, similar, probably May ish. Michael, uh, it's, yeah, Bet Online has uh, some games that are, uh, and I'll tell you, well, you know what, and we're going to add on, one? we're going to add the uh, Michigan. There's a little variance there, but that Michigan Texas line, uh, I've got I've got enough uh, I've got enough certainty now with the the program, baby. Give me give me the big blue in that one with uh, 
Now, granted, I, I took the the BOL line at uh, a little bit higher than the the FanDuel lot, but oh uh, my god, what well, you know, really, you're taking Michigan in that game over Texas. Give me the points, baby. Give me the points, Jason. Put it on the sheet. Yeah, all we'll, right. call, we'll split I the difference. It might be already on the sheet, but head to head, I like Texas quite a bit. Are, are we going head to head on the? You want to do the win total? I'll go under nine and a half. You going over? Are you like going to beat Texas? Where, where's the Where's the three losses then? Well, I mean, you got Oregon, and we, yeah, well, you got Ohio State, and you're not going to lose to Ohio State. So eleven and one. <laughs> I'll take I, 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 I Grant. I uh, yeah. Give me get. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go under nine and put that on the sheet put Jason. it on the sheet yeah uh, under nine and a half michigan win total for me over for kanish you want to talk about a homer hey i hey throw me some I, I i'll take him right now i need it after you beat me last year uh, there's that's i'm off to a two and all start thankfully uh <laughs> Reggie in the chat, back to basketball. I know we're jumping back and forth, guys. Uh, bear with us. Uh, first one uh, one seed to lose in the tournament. I got to think North Carolina, right? I, I would have said Purdue, but they got the easiest region. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, ju- I, listen, if, if you want to go spicy, um, I, I would I, – listen, North Carolina is going to be the answer for everybody because they're significantly worse than – and the significantly harder draw than any of the other three. So um, – if I, you wanted a spicy take, uh, I think Houston, you saw it in the the Iowa State game, can have those periods of offensive futility um, where you run into a hot shooting team, maybe. Um, that would be my only take there. But have I have I bet against that? Uh, no. Are they going to lose to Longwood? Probably not. Quick thoughts on the tournament for you. Uh, I'm not excited. I mean, I'm excited to watch some college hoops. I've bet a ton of games already. Uh, I'll have a quick story here before we sign off on, you know, showing my ineptitude as far as college basketball compared to college football. Uh, But a lot of the teams that I was looking to make, like, you know, okay, I can, you know, like Auburn, I I was expecting them to be a three or four seed. I was hoping they'd get in in the same region as a Purdue or North Carolina. I was going to take like Auburn to the final four type of stuff. No, they get thrown in the Connecticut bracket. Obviously I like Connecticut. I think they're the most complete team. Uh, I, I wasn't a fan of how it all got laid out as far as opportunities uh, to, to have a, a real good bracket. Well, what was your thoughts? Yeah, there, you know what? I, I mean, that it's, it's one of those things it's you, and you've seen this with the committee in college football a little bit where uh, we are, the best example being the most recent one of Alabama, Florida state where they, they get, I mean, they're, they're running back Michigan state because Tom is those name and stuff. They like, they make a lot of branding financial decisions as opposed to, and then uh, the thing that I hate more is they match up. Like I'll, I'll tell you two schools that I really, you know, liked as far as longer prices to make sweet 16 or final four were St. Mary's and grand Canyon. And they matched, yeah. they play each other in the first yeah. round. McNeese and Gonzaga. Yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. it just sucks. I hate when they, they do, do that. that. Crap. And that to me is even more criminal than the in or out is like, if you're one of these teams, that's a little frisky that could make a run. They give you like the suicide pathway of like having no chance to win four straight games of these. So yeah, that was, I honestly St. Mary's was going to be my like loved how they're playing end of the year, but, and they, they get a horrific matchup and draw. So, um, I, I thought I saw a lot of that, to be honest with you. Teams mm-hmm. that I was like, oh, I, you know, I might, you know, take this team, you know, lead eight surprise. No, I just mm, sucks in that regard. Uh, looking through the chat here. Can this top the old Dominion live meltdown watch along? Could be. Uh, it, 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 if well, Houston, it could if Long yeah, was not doing so well. I think what hurts is Houston getting beat by 30 in the Big 12 championship game. Probably get some refocus. So no, I'm not expecting it. Uh, but it could be. It does have the possibility, at least if it's close. Uh, a little bit there. Uh, Spammy Sosa. Have you guys bet any conference futures yet? Are still waiting on the portal. The reason I have not bet any conference futures has nothing to do with the portal. It has to do with the pricing. The theoretical hold percentages for the sports books on those on that market right now is ridiculous. I, I'm I'm looking to shop, particularly in the Big Twelve conference where I think any one of 10 teams could win it in that conference. I just don't, I don't see good fair prices. I, I agree I, with you. I think I especially what I the early releasers will sometime. And again, when you're the first one releasing, I understand protecting yourself to a point, but 
they'll add in a lot of that big and hold and then kind of hope people bet into it anyway because it's first of you know first of a market and stuff but i agree with you there has not been um and especially it's just been the big four conferences uh which are relatively you know like it's harder to make a mistake on any of those um hasn't been much out there that i've been chomping that the bit to bet wow this is news to me i'm gonna have to look at this uh the guy in the chat espn bet and bet 365 at win totals too yeah you know what i will and not i i found and it's someone because it's the bet 60 365 is like one of the hardest places to get down um because of their risk management i did not say i agree i didn't see the the espn bet so i have to take a look at that uh yeah i will i'll be looking right after the show's over thank you for giving me an extra half hour kanish uh, to look in that we'll be looking <laughs> at that we'll report on that um next time we talk to you guys maybe maybe i'll start giving out win totals i mean if i mean five six seven books are up my you know why not uh charles in the chat uh the tuttle heisman starts versus texas yeah that'd be a nice one Got, got to be Either way, baby. You go. That's the beauty of having multiple star quarterbacks, Tuttle or G. Uh, we, we'll, we'll probably play them both. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, Kyle in the chat, Joey Case, 40 minutes of college hoops was more than the committees. <laughs> Damn, I shame. was going to say, nobody knows uh, DePaul better than me after uh, sweating some of these DePaul games that Fez has faded. Oh, my God. Yeah, committee li- leaves a little bit to be desired pretty much in any of the college sports. I uh, still think Austin Mack can win the job in Tuscaloosa. I mean, obviously, I bet him to win the Heisman. I mean, ask me in a month. I got to watch their spring game. I mean, I, I hate that that market was pretty widely available so early as well. Mm. I just felt like I was going to have to force any kind of good practice report and his odds were going to be changing. Uh, John in the chat, uh, don't let Greta Berg know they sent three Bama schools to, Was- uh, to Washington State uh, in the first round. Yeah, that was – I, I thought we were supposed to go to the pod system. They're shipping, you know, keep it close to home. Right. Now they're shipping a bunch of teams across the country. I, it was, you know, a bad job by the committee, uh, to say the least. Uh, a couple more, and then we'll get you out of here. Uh, wow, yeah, they're up on ESPN Bet. Maybe you can bet more than two bucks. Oh, huh, yeah, I'm going to have to look. I, I think I, I got an account there that hasn't been limited yet, uh, one of my buddies. So, uh, spammy in the chat, do you think Dave Duran has reached out? to the center of the basketball team about playing D tackle. I like, I like that. Yeah, they did lose their D tackle to Miami, but yeah. Well, how about that run from NC state? Uh, one that I did lose some money on was NC state. I bet North Carolina in that championship game. I thought NC state off the overtime game against Virginia was out of gas. We don't see five fifth game in five days too often. It happens. No. What? Once every yeah. few years, maybe. The, uh, that the was, guy was like, on the hot seat to get fired and this turn it first of all like who what kind of contract is that where it just triggered a two-year extension for him he wins the he wins the NCAA ACC tournament and now he's like you got him for two more years so yeah that was probably uh whatever I, I think it was like a seven million dollar uh winner there you're probably, probably the happiest guy happiest coach on earth one thing that gets me on college hoops I just can't believe they value three, four days more than three, four months. Right. It I just know. boggles my know. freaking mind that that sport focuses. I just, what are we taught in betting? Sample size. I need more. I need more data. I need more. And they just, nope, <laughs> whatever we got last in this three, four days is everything. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you got any closing thoughts? Any closing bets as far as maybe for hoops, college football, anything? I got, you know what? I don't, the hoop stuff, I haven't, uh, I bet a little, you know, some single games here and there, but I wish I had, you know, a sexy future or something or blah, that to, to get down on. I don't really, I, I was like after the, I bet a few before the bracket came out and now I wouldn't bet them after the bracket came out. So I, I had a, like a couple lists of some higher prices and the way the draw went, I would not bet those now. So that was my, I was going to come in with a couple of St. Mary's being one of them, um, but then they got a horrible draw. So, uh, yeah, thanks to the committee for uh, ruining this last segment here of, uh, you know, some long shots that I liked. So I got a quick story. Give me 90 seconds. Uh, I'm, you know, people probably think I have a big ego. I mean, if you got if you bet every game, you'd have to have some ego, particularly in college football. I bet every game in college, in the tournament. I I don't know if this is really in the weeds. So Ken Palm put a, up his projections. I don't originate in college basketball, but I know that Ken Palm drives the market. I know that tournament games should be shaded a little bit under, lower scoring, more pressure and all that. 
he came out with his projections. They're all like high. Like I'm like, oh my god, they're like ten points off these opening numbers at DraftKings. They're usually not. I can understand them being a couple points off uh, because it's a tournament. But I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, what is more likely? DraftKings had an idiot posting idiotic numbers, or is Kempom off? I'm like, ah, I'll go. I'll trust Kempom in this instance. I bet every game over, and count, come to find out, Kempom <laughs> today. Uh, changed his projections, l- lowered every single game by six points. So <laughs> I have a bet on every over. I normally like unders uh, in the NCAA tournament, but yeah, what an idiot I am. I, I should have reached out to a few people. I knew I was in trouble when Circa opened last night and they weren't too far off DraftKings numbers. And then Bart Torvik came along and the numbers were way lower. So I I got 32, maybe po- possibly negative EV bets. <laughs> <laughs> going off of a fraud uh, Ken Palm early number. So, but to my, thankfully, most of them have moved up though. So I have technically CLV on a bunch of them, but we'll see. There, there's a, a non ego that a lot of people wouldn't be, you know, willing to share. But I, I did something probably really, really stupid last night. <laughs> hey, I mean, well, that, that I can see the thought process, but I saw that today. Of like, I didn't know you had bet it, but I saw someone today, some tweets about like, Ken Pop lowering all his projections. They all were six points higher than what they were this morning. So I was thinking that DraftKings effed up. They were the only ones up. I'm like, I don't have high limits. I just told my buddy, hey, bet, you know, flat rate bet all these. There's a possibility that all these numbers are are off. Uh, nope. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> oh, well, what an idiot I am. Uh, Drew, uh, the, the, the friend of the program, yeah, the ball could be different. Uh, technically I like betting more under, so I probably should have had that in the back of my mind and, and shouldn't have done that, but oh, well, we'll see what happens. Uh, favorite, uh, one last one, uh, favorite first round upsets. Huh, man, it, it would be probably like the popular ones like McNeese for me, I guess. I don't know. Uh, quick strategy. No different than, than I mean, depends on, on your uh, bracket pool, how many people are in it and what, what, what are the, the rules of the pool? Uh, as far as, I mean, uh, do you get more credit for upsets? Uh, is it, you know, basically you get a ton of points for getting the final four right, the championship, right? So it really depends on your pool as far as the rules. I'm filling out a bracket. Rob will have you squared away as far as circles off today. They're talking that on the circles off podcast. Anything to yeah, close out, man? I'll get you out of here. A couple, I like, um, I didn't have any like big, like, uh, like big upsets. A couple of like the underdog teams, uh, that bet against um we're here let me f- find it here blah, blah, blah. um yeah i know mcneese was a popular one on there the other one was i like sanford over kansas yeah 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 trouble. that was uh another one I, so honestly like, like i like and this is a not a we don't want to go too in the weeds i kind of like sprinkling a little bit more in the nit and i know this is going way in the weeds but yeah. um a couple of games there where I don't think you can get, you'll get your best effort from, from some of the teams there. Uh, I, I just, I like that tournament a little bit more for the opportunity in terms of like betting. Did you make some time. NIT bets already? I, I sprinkled a few there. Um, there you go. I like uh, one San Fran. I bet San Francisco versus Cincinnati um, took some money line there too. Plus six, a uh, little bit of San Fran. So don't think there's too much uh, between those teams. So uh, took a little, Little San Fran there. App State, too, was another one that uh, bet a little dog there in the, the first round NIT. So the, for if you're if you're bored on a Wednesday, uh, those were a couple ones we bet already. Got a final four national title pick before the games tip off because I won't talk to you until Friday. It's just I, I do think it's square as it gets. Connecticut's the best team in the country by kind of a decent margin. Um, so that would be the the square pick. Uh, the sexy is I'll still I'll still go with uh St. Mary's for a price. I, lo- I love the way they're playing a season at the end of the season. Loved their coach. Um, love that they finally got the Gonzaga off their back. So that would be one. I think I, I bet some 20 to one final four. The pathway doesn't make it that much value anymore, but um, that's when I'll, I'll take as far as uh, an off the, off the cuff one. You. I'm going to take Connecticut best team. I hate that, that they got put in the toughest region though, against teams that I was looking to bet on uh, like Auburn, uh, Illinois looked pretty good yep. to me. Uh, yeah. I think the, the one seed to go down, we already mentioned North Carolina. I, you know, Arizona, I'd like out of that bracket. But it could be – hell, I could see North Carolina getting beat in the second round, Izzo, Michigan State. So uh, I'll pick 
I'll be square. Uh, and t- no, I don't know if it's square. I mean, UConn's the best team. They just are. I mean, yep. they're, they're the, mo- the what most well built. Uh, they don't have very many weaknesses. If they play anywhere near their A game, nobody's beating them. That's going to do it, guys. I appreciate everyone uh, tuning in. I pre- appreciate you, as always, Kanish. I appreciate Jason for filling in for Zach for today and for all the show updates, including, again, 8 o'clock, right around 8 o'clock Eastern on Friday. We're going to have that watch along. Kanish will join me along with several other guests, hopefully Fez as well, as we watch some of the NCAA tournament uh, games as far as the first uh, round on Friday night. For all those updates on that, make sure you're following us at Hit the Books HQ and at the Hammer HQ on Twitter. That'll do it. We'll talk to you guys next time.